the position of the air passage plug. All right, yeah, okay, here's your drain plug. Outboard, got you. Uh, maybe this is the uh, air passage plug. For air screw. I don't see any of the air screw. They don't show a close up of that screw right there. Remove the idle addressed screw and spring. Let's write this down. Was a lock washer there that I don't have. I bet you I'm gonna need more than just this. <laughs> that was step one. Remove idle adjustment from spring. It removes. It doesn't say anything about a lock washer missing from my assembly. Remove the screws B. Figure 15, ah, screws B, figure 15, securing the top covers and remove them. Doesn't look like they've ever been touched. Remove the throttle arm mounting bolts. Remove the pulley mounting bolt. Remove the throttle return spring. Remove the screw and lock washer securing the throttle shaft plate. Set plate. Throttle shaft set plate. Is it this thing? Throttle shaft set plate. Fifteen is the stopper plate. No. Uh, this set plate. Twelve. Ah. Set plate. Remove the rubber caps at each end of the carburetor assembly. Withdraw the throttle shaft from the left hand side. Push it out from the right hand side. Which side am I facing? Alright. Uh, withdraw the throttle shaft from the left hand side. Push it out from the right hand side. Let me see. That doesn't tell me anything. So, which way does it go? Alright, those are those. Uh, remove the mounting screws, figure 17. Securing the carburetors to the mounting plate and remove each carburetor. These carbs are going to need a thorough going over. I don't believe they've ever been touched. Ew. There is a dude on the KZ Rider forum who is adamant that carburetor kits are useless. And all you need are new gaskets and O-rings. Uh, he's not wrong. There are quite a few brass parts included in the kit that, provided you clean the ones you have, you don't necessarily need. 
However, if, like me, you hog out some of the parts trying to remove them, they sure are nice to have on hand. With some limitations, the Keister kits are of good quality and they certainly allow for the tuning of the carburetors. Derpy bird. I am going to leave... Ooh. I'm going to leave the throttle arm and valve sem assembly alone. So what needs to happen is this needs to come up part so that I can clean this out. What's included in the Keister kit are the needles and these E-clips. Now for this assembly, this is all that Keister provides this whole assembly. There is a small spring that is located under the clip. Now it's not in an area that should see a ton of abuse, but you can see mine is all rotted out. Not rotted, rusty, crusty, needs to be cleaned up. If you really need it, you can probably get a replacement at a decent hardware store, but in light of what else is included in the kit, why not put this in there as well? Attached to the needle are a spacer and a spring seat. These appear to be made of nylon and mine look we're okay but it seems like these should be included in the kit especially given the age of the original parts and the relative expense of including them. And being provided all these other needles to tune with granted I haven't seen these available in my travels. Uh, they may be made of pure unobtainium however it'd be nice to see these included in the kit. This needs to be cleaned. Ugh. Yeah, I'm leaking. Nothing like having a gas leak with an open flame in the background. Hey, that came out nice. This is my float and my float pin. Aside from cleanup, uh, my floats look to be in good shape. I've seen replacement floats for $22 each, so unless they're deteriorated, these are going to get used again. Uh, adding them to the kits it would increase the cost of them considerably, so I'm okay with not having these. This is the float valve needle, float valve seat, and under that is a gasket. This is what feeds fuel into the bowl. There's my gasket. All three of these parts are included in the kit. However, unless the float needle and or the seat are deformed, all they need is a good cleaning. So you only really need the gasket. I'm going to use the new ones because I paid for them and they're shiny. This is a pilot jet. This feeds the engine from idle to part throttle. And unless you destroy it coming out, it can be cleaned and put back. The Keister kit gives me the tuning option of a leaner jet or a richer one or the same thing. The main jet plays a large part in how much fuel gets into the engine. Here the Keister kit gives you six options to lean out or enrich in the air fuel mixture. All you have to do is clean these up, put a new o-ring on here and you're all set. Now except for the tuning flexibility the brass parts in the kit for this aren't needed. Beneath the air bleed pipe, in there, and visible, ooh, right there, right, right, right there. That's the needle jet. What it's 
it's what the unironically called jet needle fits into to restrict fuel flow at lower engine speeds. As you get into the throttle and the needle comes out, more air rushes by at the top, more fuel comes out of the jet. It's a compression fit into the body of the carb, and I've changed two of them, but I'm leaving the remaining two alone. I came real close to damaging the body of the carburetor trying to squeeze this bad boy in there, so it scared me off pressing my luck. It's not necessarily a wear item, so it can be cleaned and reused in place. The keister kit includes a new needle jet. If you want or need to change it, good luck. Oh, the air screw. Oh, the air screw. Hello, air screw. Oh, good. Now, I've done this twice so far, and I had no problem getting the first air screw out. It would have been just fine with a cleaning and a new O-ring. The second one, however, was a bear to get out. This one was okay. The second one was a bear to get out, and it was jammed in there. And had I not killed the top of it, because it's a brass and brass flakes off, I could have cleaned the crud off, put a new O-ring on it, and reused it. So, it's, while it's not technically necessary to have this in the kit, I certainly appreciated it. The spring can also be cleaned off, Whoop! but they include all three pieces in the kit, and I for one was glad that they did, at least on my number four carburetor. Also included in the kit is a very similar looking pilot screw assembly. My model did not have a pilot screw, so I won't be using it. I have four if you need one choke or the starter plunger is where things get a little disappointing with the keister kit. A replacement plunger is provided in the kit but lacks for my purposes the pointy end. This goes into the starter fuel passage and I'm not sure what the effect would be not having the pointy end when the choke is fully open but it certainly would affect the flow of fuel at partial choke. Again, it's an omission that isn't terribly important, as I can easily clean and reuse the existing plunger I did on my other two carbs. However, the rubber seal at the base of the plunger should be changed. This is fossilized. The kit does not include a separate seal with an opening for a pointy end. I'm left to remove this seal in this plunger that I'm not going to use, and pray to God that I drill a hole in the center of it to accommodate that pin and fit snugly there. A replacement O-ring and spring are included, but inexplicably, the dust seal is not. I had to purchase new ones from another supplier. And lastly, the nylon bushing, if needed, must be purchased separately. Given that these last two items are out in the elements, I would think they would at least be part of a comprehensive rebuilt kit. Okay, well, time for this thing to go for a swim. Here in the float bowl are a check ball, a weight, and a clip. None of these are included in the keister kit, so do not lose these. Like I just did. Gotcha! You little bastard.